Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to Modern Mining. Today, it's finally time to start getting some additional airflow in this garage. The last week it was getting up to around 86 degrees here in Kentucky and that was making this garage a little too hot during the days. So my plan, if you remember, was to crack this garage like an inch off the ground so that that exhaust fan has more air to pull in. But I found out that that's gonna suck in a ton of leaves and a bunch of other just debris and dust that I don't necessarily want getting in the garage all the time. So I noticed the other day that these windows have screw holes on them. So I'm actually gonna take all these windows out of this garage and you can see there's four of them and these are pretty big windows. So that's gonna be a lot of airflow and plenty of intake for that exhaust fan. It's probably almost too much intake. In this video, we're also gonna talk about filtration because I don't wanna be sucking in like a bunch of pollen or other stuff that's gonna get into my GPUs. So we're gonna take these out and then I have a pretty clever way that I'm gonna do filtration. It may or may not work, so stick around and let's see if this is a cheap way to do filtration on mining sheds or other mining intake setups. Want to buy a new ASIC miner but not sure which one to purchase? Check out today's sponsor, ASICprices.com. Their website offers an intuitive way to research before your ASIC purchase. You can sort by ROI if that's your thing or daily profit. Don't forget to set your electric rate to make sure the results are accurate. Interested in only CASPA ASICs? Switch the algorithm dropdown and sort by CASPA only. See one you want? Select it and view a variety of useful information before your purchase. Historical revenue, historical price data. You can even break it down to price per hash for each specific vendor. Though I don't have any ASICs yet, I've been closely watching ASICprices.com to find the perfect buying opportunity. Special thanks to ASIC Prices for sponsoring this video. I'll leave a link down below. So for filtration, I purchased this stuff on Amazon. And this is basically a huge sheet of this super fine like mesh. And I think it's used for almost like printing or something, but I don't know if you can see how fine that actually gets. But this is what I'm gonna to try to use. And I wanted to use a mesh so that I can either spray it through with water to clean it, or even maybe like get the leaf blower out and blow it out so that I don't have to keep replacing filters. But this stuff I'm thinking may be too fine of a mesh. I think it might get clogged too much. But since I have four huge windows, I think this is, at least worth a shot. My plan is just to cut this to size and I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna mount it yet. I may end up just putting hot glue in the corners so it's easy to just rip off clean or put a new one up if I want because this is definitely enough for probably 10 windows at a minimum. So if I need to replace it and put a new piece on, that's fine. So this video, we're going to take these windows out create a template and cut this a few times to get sections and then figure out the best way to mount it on. There may be a way to use the screw holes that are already there. We'll just have to look. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking these out. Well, that plan may already be coming to an end quickly. I don't know, those look like they're almost insulationed in. I'm not sure if I can actually, oh wait, maybe I can. I might be able to get this paint out, so let me mess around with that. There we go. I thought this was plastic, but it definitely is glass, so I need to be careful with these. And then can I put it back in for winter time? Yeah, I mean, it seems like that'll work fine. So, okay. There's just a little bit of like caulk around the window and that's what was kind of holding it in. But all right, let's be careful with these. So the good news is since the window separated from this frame, I should just be able to overcut my piece 
and then just screw it on with this and I'll have a nice, perfectly flat piece of um, mesh over those. So let me get these other ones out and we'll see how that looks. These things have like 20 screws each, kind of annoying. I've been known to drop a window before, so I really don't want to do that again. Nice. Wow, those things are putting a lot of air into here, so that's good. Cool. I really need something I can hook behind there to get this caulk undone. This little thing is perfect, just a little piece of metal. You just get it back there and give it a very light pry. Three down. I can tell this gra glass is not Wrong, so I'm doing my best not to shatter it. All right. All four are out. Okay, so my plan now is just to use the frame as a stencil and maybe leave an extra inch on, in all dimensions so that the, it's not the exact size as the mesh I'm gonna use. And then just attach Put the mesh up and screw that thing straight through it. We'll see how that goes, but let's start cutting our mesh now. So you can see this is a big old mesh sheet. It's gonna be plenty. We'll lay this down just in the corner for now. And then I guess just cut that with the razor blade. I need some way to hold this up when I mount it. Or maybe, let's see, I'll just do this. So it'd certainly be a lot easier with two people. Boom. I mean, you really can't even tell there's not a window there. Get it nice and tight so it looks even better. Looks really good. So my worry now is if I screw this in, it's gonna bunch up the material and suck it all in. But let's get a screw and see if it just punctures through or what it does. Okay, let's see if the screws work. Nice. Okay, it doesn't bunch up, so we should be good. Let's put a couple more in. And you can pull it tight, so it makes like just a perfect little tight screen. It makes it even harder to see that it's in there. And I was worried that wind wouldn't be able to come through it, but I can definitely still feel wind coming through, so that's even better. This mesh is like, for screen printing. I imagine that's like putting logos on t-shirts, but it was $7.99 for that whole section. Um, so that's a pretty good deal. 
we'll see how it lasts over time, but um, I'll leave a link down below if you guys want to check this thing out. All right, just like that, we've got about, I don't know, what is that, three foot by one foot? So, I don't know, 12, 15, somewhere around there, square feet of filtration for $7. So, that's kind of budget thinking we're talking about on this channel. Let's turn on our exhaust fan. And let's see, do we feel cold air coming out of here? Not a ton, but with so much surface area, that's to be expected. It's not just gonna be gushing out still. Yeah, that even doesn't feel like it's doing a ton. This window already has a screen on it, so I'm gonna leave that as is for now. First, let's make sure the garage still works properly. It should. Looks good. Let's see it from the outside. How does it look? Got to keep the wife happy, so. Oh yeah. It basically just looks like windows on there, honestly. Actually, <laughs> I'm surprised how good that looks. You can't even tell that there's any sort of filter in those windows at all. So just to reiterate my thought process on this, since my bedroom is directly above, I really do not want that exhaust fan to be sucking AC out from the rest of the house. And if that's the only intake, then it's gonna be trying to pull air through every little hole, nook and cranny in the ceiling and try to pull air from somewhere. So now that we have plenty of intake, the hope is that that is not going to pull out cold air from the inside. One last thing I'm gonna do, and I won't put it in this video, but I'm gonna do it off camera, is remember when I put all this plastic around my return duct, I still have a bunch of that plastic, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it all around the supply vent too, because this insulation around it is old as hell and definitely still air that leaks out of there. So if I can make that airtight as well, then essentially this whole garage should be airtight. I'm gonna put plastic over this covering as well. Kind of like what I did right here. That's totally plasticed off to the basement. Well, I said I wasn't gonna show you guys, but I ended up doing it anyway. So both ducts now totally sealed off from the upstairs. So there is now no way for any of my AC to get sucked out of that exhaust fan. It's about the most ghetto thing you ever saw, but I mean, just looking through the garage, it's, it's not like hanging down or anything, so not terrible. But, all right, well, that's it for this video, guys. See you next time.